The first thing we have to do is prepare a burette. So the burettes are located on the side bench near where you usually pick up your chemicals. Okay? And they're stored like this. They're stored upside down with the stopcock open. And that's because that when you finish, you want to you clean it and then leave it to dry thoroughly. If this is closed, it doesn't dry very well. Okay? Um, you'll really only need one of them. They all come with two at a time. So if, if you're in a full lab, then what we can do is turn it sideways and you can share across the table from each other. If you don't have a full lab, I recommend getting your own and not sharing. It's a lot easier than reaching across the table. Okay? This is called a burette clamp. They're specially designed to hold a burette completely vertical. Um, you operate them by pinching the clamp here to let the burette go. Now, burettes aren't super cheap, so make sure you're gentle with this. Don't use it for sword fighting or whacking the table. I know it's tempting. Try to avoid it. Okay, so in the procedure, it tells you first to wash with a mild soap solution. That's this thing, okay? And so when you're cleaning a burette, you're going to do it in the sink. Our sinks are especially deep with really high faucets so that you can do this, all right? So you're just going to kind of hold it in the sink and you can pump a few squirts of soap in there. Close this part, this, this valve, and you can kind of, you know, shake it to get it clean, okay? That's step one. The next thing you're going to do is then rinse it with some distilled water. So you're going to use your squirt bottle to do that. Making sure in all, all of your rinses that you do open the valve and allow the liquid to, to rinse the valve at the end of your burette. So you're going to do a couple rinses with distilled water to get the soap out. And then your final rinse is always going to be with the material that you're using. So today um, we're going to be putting our base inside of our burette. So we're going to use this. I, again, I like to use a secondary container to make sure that I'm not pipetting or putting anything in the stock bottle. So there's a little die in here which will make it easier for you to see the markings. Um, yours won't be like that, all right? So a burette holds 50 milliliters, 50.00 milliliters, because it is also a class B um, glassware, all right? So all of that information is right at the top. It tells you the tolerance, tells you the temperature that it was calibrated at, all kinds of info right on here. But this holds 50 milliliters. So I filled up uh, my 100 mil a little bit, and what I want to do is put the end in the sink, all right? We can put acids and bases in the sink because we have neutralizers. Normally we wouldn't do that, but our sinks are especially equipped, so it's okay. So we're going to put this in the sink with the valve open. You can tell it's open when it's pointing towards the, the direction of the glass. The cross is closed, pointing towards the, sort in this parallel direction is open. So I'm going to put that end in the sink, okay? And then I'm going to use a funnel. These are in your drawer, but uh, sometimes the ones in the drawer are the, the larger stemmed funnel, which is handy for filtering. But here, they're not going to fit well inside of your burette. So what you can do is, on the side bench in our labs, we have a drawer that's marked funnel, and you can go look for one with a thinner stem. That will sit right in there, okay? And so basically, what you're going to do is take your sodium hydroxide, the 0.1 molar that's already prepared for you, and you're just going to pour it in and rinse. All right. You don't have to fill the entire burette to rinse. I let a little bit drain out, okay? And then what I'm going to do is take my funnel out, and you can turn it and sort of let it leak up. And you can even put this end into the sink and turn it and let it drain out that way, okay? So what I don't want to see is the burette on the stand and you're trying to fill it above your head. That's not safe because then the chemicals are above your head, you don't have as much control and they're likely to come down on your face. So once that's done, you're gonna fill it completely. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It doesn't have to go to the zero mark exactly because you're gonna record <clears throat> an initial and a final measurement for every titration that you do. No way, you guys aren't gonna believe this, it's perfect. The odds of that are astronomical. That was just luck, it's not skill. Although titration is a skill that you get better at with practice, okay? So when I put the burette in here, I'm gonna make sure that the clamp is putting it completely vertically, okay? 
Um, I don't want it tilted one way or the other because that's going to affect where the bubble is. I take out my funnel because if you look at this closely, when I did that, some more stuff dripped down. So it was the perfect volume. But if we can zoom in a little bit, we'll see that it is not at zero anymore. Let me turn it around so you guys can read it. All right, so our zero mark is right there. And I think the white might be the best way to view this, okay? So it's a little bit above zero at this point, but that's okay because we can just drain it out. And I'm not ready to titrate yet anyway because if we look down here, we can see that there is a gigantic air bubble stuck in here. So what we do is we're gonna use our, a larger beaker for a waste. This way, if anything rips or if I overfill or you know anything goes wrong, then there's something to catch the mess. All right, so this is gonna be my waste beaker. And so all I'm gonna do is not really pay attention to the volume at this point. This one's crooked. I'm gonna open the valve so that the fluid passes through and I'm gonna to try to get this bubble out. It can be tricky. All right, so you zoomed in on this. All right, so some of the bubble came out, but you'll notice there's still some right up top right here. Maybe you can see it better like this. So there's a bubble stuck in there and I wanna get it out. Some tricks, you can just let it flow for a few minutes. In this case, that worked. Okay, just a couple seconds really, not even minutes. Sometimes the bubbles will be stubborn and you might need to adjust the pressure here. Seek help from your instructor in that case. You don't want it to be too loose because it'll leak out. You don't want it to be too tight because it's hard to turn. Um, and if it's too loose, air bubbles will come in from the side and sort of accumulate right there anyways. All right. If you still have really stubborn bubbles and adjusting the valve doesn't work, you can also do um, a couple tricks. All right. My valve's a little snug, so I'm going to loosen it. Um, you can get the, the valve so it's almost vertical and then really quickly turn it. That wasn't really quick. Really quickly turn it to let a tiny bit out and that can kind of force the bubble to go. Or you can open it wide and tap it, okay? It can take some finesse. It can take a little bit of patience to get all the bubbles out, but it's really important that you do because if there is a bubble trap in the end here where we can't measure, it's going to fluctuate in size, okay? So gases expand and contract depending on the, the pressure and the temperature, etc. So we wanna make sure that there's no bubbles in here to do that. Now, um, I have a volume up here that is not zero anymore because of course I drained some of it out and that's okay, that's not a big deal, all right? So I'm gonna read this and then what I want you to do is see if you get the same measurement, okay? So I like to use my little paper so that it's easier to see. And I have to remember that this records to two decimal places. It's also kind of backwards. So zero is up here. And as we go down, we're, we're sort of measuring how much liquid has been added. So here, my initial reading is gonna end up being about 4.6, no, call it 4.78. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it around, get a good shot of it for you and see if you agree. Remember, of course, that the zero is up there. Good. Okay. So that's how your at works.